In this video, we're gonna talk about LiDAR scanning with the X-Grid scanner. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic, Vue, and Lucidlink for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now, back to the video. All right, so we're here at X-Grid. Uh, so, Sonny, tell me what we have going on here. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at X-Grid, so first off, we have our own scanners. We have the, uh, this is a LiDAR scanner or SLAM-based scanner, but you have the LiDAR on top, which is taking point clouds, mm -hmm. but also 48 megapixel 360 camera on both sides, so you're taking okay. in you know, high resolution 360 pictures at the same time. So what it does, it does um, you know, generates point clouds, of course, the uh, mm -hmm. models at, as you go, mm -hmm. but more importantly that when you port it into the software mm -hmm. on our computer, it generates high resolution Gaussian splat models. Okay. So like, you know, with this haul, we probably will just take me about an hour-ish to, to scan everything. And the process we put into a computer to, to, to Could get you the scan this whole hall with one pass or do you have to like recharge the battery or how? I mean, so the battery lasts for about 90 minutes or one half hour. Okay. So like I said, if it's a one hour, it's definitely okay. okay. Um, then the battery is the handle itself. Okay. So there's any swappable. So if you want multiple different scans, then you know, just grab different batteries. And how does the software, like if you are doing, like let's say we're scanning around this booth and yeah. then we scan somewhere else in the hall, Sure. Will it be able to match up the uh, location data? So what you can do, so this is a ground control plate mm -hmm. where you just place it down, you can record the ground control plate. As long as in the two different models that mm -hmm. you say, okay, there's the overlapping points, mm -hmm. we can merge the different data into one big one. Okay. Yeah. And so then walk me through the process. So you could just import the data directly. Well, first off, when you're scanning, do you, can you connect it to a phone? Can you kind of see? Right. So what you're, what, absolutely. What you're capturing? Yeah, so you see the point cloud in real time on okay. your phone. So that's the main controlling app. Okay. But most all the raw data is uh, stored on, on the device. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is that you port the data onto the computer. Uh, it's a locally processed software. So everything's processed on the computer. Okay. And in just a few clicks, there's not much other things you need to do mm -hmm. really and just start processing. Okay, and so it'll process point cloud and make a Gaussian splat? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Or what applications have you seen people do with the Gaussian splats? And yeah, where, where they sent it. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to look at the Gaussian splat model I have here, yeah, this is a, a scan of a you know a pen, a, a penthouse yeah. uh, that we did. So we have multiple rooms. Did you ever put this on the computer? And even uh, to go, just curious how outdoors. Wow. And this is all from one scan or one. And this like is all one scan and actually in just six minutes of scan. I'm just walking around six minutes. Just walking around in six minutes. And, and the camera's on the device, no other additional yeah, cameras. No, so everything is integrated, so nothing like external. Uh -huh. uh, and then the processing time, it was roughly about two hours. Okay. Uh, and then this is the model that you get. Uh, and then also very interesting is that um, because we're slam-based Gaussian splats, so mm. actually the splats is sitting on the point clouds. Mm. So therefore you can get point clouds at the same time there that you can do measurements okay. inside the model. So that's especially useful for actually locational scouting uh -huh. right, for, for the media use cases, because you want to go to a room, there's just, you know, uh, you can take 20, 30 pictures, but there's never enough angle of the certain right. environment. Mm -hmm. But with the 3D model, you can, you know, you're literally free, however you want to plan it. You can plan your shots a little bit, you know, see the different angles. You can even measure, even like a door to see where you are, your, your props can go through. So there's actually, it's very useful. It basically is like collecting a, almost like a 3D photo in a sense okay, yeah. of everything that's in there. And there's a lot of information that you can use. Uh, do you know what the accuracy is of the point cloud? Like how uh, do you yeah. detail it gets? Yeah, so the, the accuracy is roughly about uh, one inch. Uh -huh, okay. um, and then depending on the, the scan itself, sometimes like, is it you go, Closer you get, the more the accurate. The closer, you might want to go a little bit slower uh -huh. uh, when walking, but yeah, we can roughly an average about one inch in okay. accuracy. And then pricing of the, the scanner? Yeah, so uh, the, the scanner is roughly around like $15,000 okay. uh, for the smaller one, and we have the bigger one, which is bigger in range and a more denser uh, point cloud. Yes, yeah, so tell me about some of the details with the bigger one. Yeah. The, what are the main differences? So the main difference, of course, is in in terms of the LiDAR itself. You know, the range start from like 300 feet to um, to 1,000 feet. Okay. So, you know, this is more for interior plus exterior, much bigger environment, or even adapting to environment like tunnels. Um, those okay. are usually challenging for us for slam based. Um, this is roughly around $28,000 uh, okay. landing price, like, you know, retail. Okay. Yeah. And that's everything else kind of workflow wise, about yes. the same is, connector device. Exactly. The workflow the exactly the same. Uh, the initial processing is happening on the device. Uh, the bigger one has a one terabyte internal storage, so that can okay. store a lot of data. Um, and then the rest is basically the same. Okay. 
Okay, camera is same or higher resolution? Uh, uh, it's the it's same, it's the same, same resolution. resolution, yeah. Okay, and just kind of bigger picture, what have you been seeing um, lighter applications in like film production? Like how have you been seeing that in yeah, so use cases, different stages? Absolutely, so I think LiDAR is kind of like just a starting point, mm -hmm. uh, but I think you are combining with the Gaussian splats because there's a high fidelity, you know, great models. And then, you know, because we provide that efficient generation of the mm. model. We're seeing it in use case, not just in location and styling, but you know, starting in pre mm. uh, but then also in even, you know, uh, production where they put it on the LED walls for virtual production. Yeah. Um, because uh, when you scan it right, you know, you get very good quality uh, mm. as a backdrop. Um, so so they are, we're seeing a lot of new use cases. So you're seeing coming. people going from scan to uh, virtual LED production wall, LED yes, wall absolutely. and shooting in camera, yep, final yep. pixel. Exactly. That's great, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Uh, well, cool. Thanks, Annie. Appreciate it. So Thank much. you so much. Thank you. That's it for this video. Thanks again to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible. For more NAB videos, be sure to check out our playlist right here. I'll catch you in the next episode.